Do you love the city you live in? You stay in put? Are you sick of your hometown and trying to find a new place to go? Has COVID and violence changed the way you feel about living in big inner cities? And which cities are losing the most people? Each year, on average, 14% of Americans relocate to a new city. If that seems high to you, consider the fact that often families move when they're poor and poor families have larger families. When Donald Trump was in office, people moved less because a good economy meant less people had to move for work. But then everything went upside down in our big cities and now people are moving again. Now the big question is, which cities in each state are people leaving? Like, which places are people like, I'm out of here, I've had enough. We can look at census numbers and we can tell which places everybody's leaving from and where they're going and try to speculate on why. It's pretty interesting stuff actually. We have 50 cities to go through, so we should probably hop in our moving van and get out of here. Hey, why is everybody so sad? We're not moving too far away. You'll make new friends. I mean, do you really want to live in Montgomery anymore? Montgomery is the city in Alabama that's losing the most people right now. Last year alone, 605 more people left than came. That's 0.3% of this entire city's population. Officials in town say it's a lack of good schools that's one reason families are leaving. They're trying to get younger people to move here by making this a tech hub. So this trend may turn around if they pull it off. A lot of people were moving to Anchorage for a while, but over the last five years, people are now leaving. This is the largest city in the state, but close to one in 100 people who lived here last year moved. Most people leaving Alaska went to Florida, Texas, Idaho, and North Carolina. Now here we are in Arizona. This is our first example of a popular state, meaning Arizona is one of the fastest growing states of all. So it's harder to find places here where people are leaving, because a lot of people are coming. For most of the states, I set the bar at cities with 25,000 people. However, with Arizona, there weren't any cities with 25,000 or more people with population declines. So I had to run another report with smaller cities of 10,000 people. Anyways, Douglas is a small town at the Mexican border. It lost 0.7% of its population last year. Likely, Mexican immigrants moving north. Pine Bluff might be the worst place to live in this entire region. Poverty, crime, and drugs have been persistent here forever. They call it Crime Bluff. Look at this chart. People have been leaving Pine Bluff since 1975, and it's going way down faster and faster now. Railroad jobs and blue collar work moved away, and then gangs moved in in the 80s. And as older people die off, there's no young blood to replace them. Now I did a whole video on how folks are leaving California in droves for places like Arizona, Oregon, Utah, and even Montana. San Francisco has been shedding people all year now, and you can't even get a moving van out of here for less than three grand, and it takes months to wait for one. However, the most recent census numbers don't reflect that yet. But we have Long Beach, a beat up city south of LA to talk about. There really isn't much to say. It's ghetto in many areas, and folks are sick of the BS here. For shizzle. Bo shizzle. Like Arizona, I had to lower the population bar to find a place in Colorado that was actually shrinking. I finally found Little Sterling, population 13,000, located way up in the far right corner, which lost 1.3% of its population. This article says folks in Sterling are worried because maybe people are being undercounted. Like it's rural out here and there might be people hiding or hard to find, I don't get it. It also stated that people are being released from a prison in town at a higher rate now. So we count prisoners as people in a population? And why are we letting them out? They clearly are behind bars for a damn reason. Bridgeport's a beat up ghetto dying mess. The whole state of Connecticut's been losing people for a while now because of taxes mostly and the cold. But then COVID came and now lots of New Yorkers are fleeing New York City for Southern Connecticut and buying up all the big fancy homes. But they're never gonna move to Bridgeport. People in Bridgeport don't wanna be in Bridgeport. The biggest city in Delaware is Wilmington, and that also happens to be the city losing the most people. Look at this chart. That's not good for Wilmingtonians, unless you'd like less people around, and I guess it's a good thing. Why is Wilmington losing people? Because it's ghetto. Florida remains one of the states most people are moving to in this fine nation. However, some areas are shrinking. Take North Miami, for example. A bunch of people said, see you later alligator last year. Good for more than a 1% drop in the city's overall population. North Miami ranks 16th in the state for crime, and one in five residents is in poverty. This article says younger immigrants who settle in the greater Miami area are leaving at a much higher rate than ever in order to find more affordable housing and jobs. 
I guess Miami doesn't have affordable housing and jobs, or at least for immigrants. 1977, more people moved out of Columbus, Georgia than entered it last year. At this rate, in 100 years, there won't be anyone left here at all. Columbus is a pretty big city. There's nearly 200,000 people here. It's right along the Alabama state line. Now this is home to Fort Benning. So clearly, if we need less brave Americans at our bases, we're going to see declines in the population surrounding them. Other reasons are for jobs, and people say they want a more accepting community. For example, the gay population doesn't feel welcome here, according to a locally sourced article I found online anyways. Who in the world would want to leave Hawaii? Little Keula, which only has 36,000 people, saw 3.7% of its population leave last year alone. Is there a volcano about to erupt? Article after article talks about people leaving Hawaii more often these days. For eight years prior, the state of Hawaii added 60,000 people, and then last year, 3,700 people left. Sure, there's a lot of jobs in tourism, but that's just about it, really. And it's really expensive here. Hawaii higher-ups are trying to fix the problem, lowering taxes, building more affordable housing, and bringing in new companies or some areas they say they can fix it. All are very basic, and even I could have thought of those and I'm not even a Hawaii higher up. So Idaho's another state that's growing fast, like 2% a year, which makes it the fastest growing state in America. Much of that's California people looking for some solitude. It was hard to find a place that's losing people here, but Little American Falls, a Pocatello suburb, lost 2% of its residents last year alone. It's a small place, so a net minus 100 people makes a big difference. But look at this chart, which shows the sheer growth among most of Idaho's biggest cities. Meridian grew by 52% in the last decade alone. Other cities were close to 50% growth here too. I'm telling you, Idaho is the cat's pajamas now, folks. Illinois is the state that's losing the most people. High taxes, crime, cold weather, nothing to do. Well, at least in Chicago, there's a lot to do, but that's not keeping people from leaving. Sure, a lot of people are retreating into the nearby suburbs, but at one point, Chicago had 3.6 million people, and now it's down to just 2.6 million people. They gotta figure something out there, lol emoji. If you live in Evansville, Indiana, you're probably noticing people you used to see at Tractor Supply or at the IGA are no longer shopping there. They aren't dead, well, some of them are, but a lot of them skip town. Manufacturing jobs have slowed to a trickle here, which is one big reason this city's shrinking. For example, Whirlpool once employed 10,000 people in Evansville. Today, they employ zero people in Evansville. Little Clinton, Iowa has 27,000 people, but that's going down by the week. About five a week on average. They certainly aren't going to Illinois. Well, some might be. It's right across the Mississippi River and all. But many Iowans are headed to Minnesota, Nebraska, and Wisconsin. None moved to Vermont last year. Not a single person moved from Iowa to Vermont in 2020. What's wrong with Vermont? Anyways, all the local media talked about Clinton losing people, but none said why. Salina, Kansas lost half a percent of its population last year, the biggest drop in the state. This place ranks fifth for crime, which is enough to make some people want to leave. But it's not just Salina. A lot of rural Kansas towns are losing people. Younger families are looking for more opportunities and better schools. The people who remain are having less kids in rural areas these days. I mean, you don't need kids to farm anymore, right? And rural Kansans are dying at a higher rate these days too, likely due to lifestyle choice. Quit smoking and eating bad, Kansas people. Just about every single day, somebody else leaves Elizabethtown, Kentucky for a better life. Looks like a cool place. What's the problem? Shreveport lost nearly 8% of its population over the last decade. People are also leaving Baton Rouge too, but not nearly as fast. New Orleans has seen a decent population increase lately though. But look at this. While New Orleans' population has rebounded a bit, it's down big time since the height in 1960. This big drop here was due to Hurricane Katrina. A lot of the city was unlivable for a long time. It's still not the same place it once was. All the bars are open back up though, so that's good. Maine's population has ticked up a little bit over the last decade, but it's not because of an increase in old white people. The minority population in Maine has increased 10 times higher than its white population has. In terms of Bangor, though, it's not good news. This article says families are pushing their kids to go to college. So then they leave Maine to get an education, and then they never come back. Because they took off and got all smart, and then they realize there aren't any good jobs in Maine. Actually, there's some, but just not in Bangor. Who wouldn't leave Baltimore? This place is run down in so many areas. A whopping 5,000 more people left Baltimore last year than moved here. And many others were shot. But look at this steady decline in Baltimore. 
there's less people here now than there were a hundred years ago. You know what accelerated the flight from Baltimore? Riots did. But, you know, they made their point, right? Pittsfield's a mid-sized city way out on the New York state line. It's the fifth most dangerous place in the whole state, and there's a lot of drugs here, and not much to do for work. It's kind of a sad place right now, actually. General Electric was a big deal here forever, and then they made their crap in China and Mexico. But GE has brought back some jobs to the U.S. That's because Chinese labor costs are going up, and transportation costs are too. However, GE picked Louisville for their new factory. Sorry, Pittsfield. Just look at this place. Here's a chart that shows how badly Detroit's population's gone down. High crime and automaker manufacturing losses are the main reason. They're trying to make downtown nice again, but a lot of the suburbs look like something from a video game. And not a happy video game either. Why Nona, Minnesota is a little place across the Mississippi from Wisconsin. It's not a terrible place. I don't know why lots of people are leaving. Now it's clear why folks are boning out of Jackson, Mississippi. I mean, every day, five more people left here than came here last year. Some of the other big cities we talked about began their decline in the 60s and 70s, but Jackson didn't start going down until the early 80s. It's the capital city and the biggest place in this whole state, but it's also second for crime, and poverty here is crazy high, like one in four people are chronically on food stamps. But I don't think it's just Jackson. Mississippi's entire population went down last year. Of all southern states, only Mississippi and Louisiana saw their populations go down last year. There's a really long article here that you can read which talks about all the things Mississippi needs to do to get people to move there again, but we have to move on. Of course everybody's sick of St. Louis. It's just about the most dangerous place in the country, at least in many areas. Look at this chart. I mean, if you extend this chart out far enough, it'll be back to where it started. Zero. This is worse than even Detroit's population decline, which means St. Louis is the fastest shrinking city in the last 70 years in America. Anheuser-Busch, McConnell Douglas, Ralston Purina, AT&T, TWA, these are a few examples of large companies which left completely or scaled back their presence in St. Louis. The black population in St. Louis is leading the exodus. When the slumlords let their north side neighborhoods become so bad and run down that they're uninhabitable, well then people just have to move. I mean, you can't live in a place that you can't live in, just saying. Montana's a great state and everyone from California's moving here. Not everyone, but many are. However, Great Falls isn't as popular a destination for all the cool kids. The population hardly went down at all, but a net loss of 154 people means it's 2% smaller than it was last year. I mean, come on people. Great Falls has a Lewis and Clark interpretive center and a C.M. Russell museum and parks and Okay, I think that's just about it. Yep, that's it. If South Sioux City, Nebraska seems a little smaller these days, it's not your imagination. It is. Smaller than it was even last year. There were 13,145 people here, and now there's only 12,994 folks in town. Where'd they all go? Probably to Sioux City. That's in Iowa. Nevada's population's booming. I had to dig into the tiniest list of cities to find a place that's actually shrinking here, boy. Carlin, population 2,203, lost 333 people last year. Good for a 14% drop in one year. This little place is way out in the middle of the desert. I have no idea what the heck happened, so I'm going to call him. How may I help you? Hey, how you doing? Uh, my name is Nick, and I'm working on a YouTube video on Carlin, Nevada, losing a lot of people. And I'm wondering, does it seem like everybody left? Um, yeah, I'm trying to work. Okay, like, but like, are there less people in town? And where did they go? And why did they leave? Okay, so she clearly doesn't want to cooperate. I don't know why she's so busy, because everybody's gone. So Keene, New Hampshire lost only 39 people last year, which is only a 0.1% loss. That's hardly anybody, and it marks our smallest population decline of any city on this list. 39 people is like a whole class full of kids finally deciding that living in Keene is just too boring now. Jersey City's population had rebounded quite a bit lately after plummeting between 1950 and 1980. What's the big reason for the loss of people now? It wasn't that a lot of people left, though. That happened too, but it's the immigration population that declined. 40% of Jersey City's residents is non-native, and this is a sanctuary city for undocumented immigrants. The Trump administration probably had to do something with the drop of immigrants entering the U.S. and going to Jersey City. 
But look at this. Jersey City's population loss was so big, it represented 46% of the entire state's population decline. Wow, oh wow, oh wow. Farmington, New Mexico isn't a very exciting place, being way out in no man's land among Native American reservations and desert. It's also plagued by poverty, crime, and drugs, so it's no surprise that the folks who have the means to do so are leaving. If I catch any of these criminal punks doing anything bad, I would arrest them and bury them in the desert. Uh, <laughs> I don't think you can really do that, super gay cop. Police officers have rules, you know. Did you know Farmington got called the second worst place to raise a family in America? It doesn't surprise me, Mappy. I mean, the place has a history of being pretty rough. Hey, by the way, have you two met? No, I don't know him. If I ever catch Mappy with this gun, I'm gonna pistol whip him with that. <laughs> Okay, Mappy, put that away. Stop it, you two. We have a video to do. Man, I swear, YouTube is not paying me enough to deal with this drama all the damn time. Anyways, here we are in New York City. This place had been going down since 2016, just a little bit at a time, and then 2020 came in. Boom! A 1.3% drop in population can be credited to immigration policies we discussed earlier, but then when a city shuts down because of a pandemic, and then crime's out of control, and when practically all the bars and restaurants are either closed or might as well be closed, well, folks, what's the point? Some people, including me, think a lot of people who are leaving New York City now are the ones who have been wanting to leave and are now just ripping the band-aid off. Many will never return. Goldsboro, that's not too far from me. This place is pretty rough. Crime and drugs and poverty and boredom. Goldsboro has been suffering since its peak in 1990, and now it's about 25% smaller than it was 30 years ago. It looks like, based on this graph, the population's in freefall. Goldsboro has potential. I mean, Raleigh was kind of basic, and now it's the jam. People want North Carolina's climate and proximity to the coast and the mountains, but isolated communities in Eastern Carolina have had trouble attracting younger, successful families. North Carolina, you may not know, has more rural residents than any other state except Texas. But many are heading for the urban areas now. What's going on in Castleton, North Dakota? This itty bitty city had nearly 2,800 people last year, and now there's only 2,500 people here. Where did 10% of the population go? Hello? It's just outside of Fargo, near the Minnesota border. Maybe they just went there for gas and never came back. Man, look at this graph. It's like a slide. Whee! Though you can't tell by this free fall, Cleveland's population loss is actually kind of stabilizing, though it still remains the fifth fastest shrinking city in the country. At one point in 1950, Cleveland had more than 900,000 people, but now it's only a third that size. But it's not just Cleveland. Toledo and Akron lost a lot of people too. Cleveland hasn't seen any real gentrification outside of the Tremont area. And get this, about 75% of Cleveland's population lives in a strongly declining neighborhood. Lawton, Oklahoma has almost 100,000 people, but it's losing more than one person every single day. For comparison, Austin, the nation's fastest growing city, saw 14,000 people move in last year alone. That means in Austin, 38 people moved in every single day. A real big difference. Oregon's another state with an exploding population, so you have to find a teeny little town that's actually losing people. Little Klatskanai, way up near the Washington border in northwest Oregon, lost 16% of its population in one year alone. They only had 2,000 people last year. What is going on in Klatskanai? Pittsburgh lost nearly a half percent of its population last year. I mean, look at this graph. Again, a loss of industry is the main cause. Frankly, I was just in Pittsburgh. It's very uninspiring and very poor and really quite depressing. The main reason for Pittsburgh's population decline is older people are dying and younger people aren't having as many kids or moving here to begin with. Warwick lost 139 net people last year. As a whole, Rhode Island's entire population plateaued in 2004 and has kind of ticked down over the last few years. Lots of people are moving from the Northeast and they're going to the South and to the West. It's been kind of a domino effect in small communities like Warwick, which have been trying to attract millennials. But less people here means schools consolidate, which means unhappy parents, and then they move. And it also means less skilled people stick around, which means less business. And so you have to have higher taxes to keep the place afloat. Rhode Island people know about taxes. South Carolina is one of the fastest growing states in the country because it's warm and cheap. Sumter lost a few hundred folks last year, good for an almost 1% decline. Sumter's way out on the sticks in the middle of tobacco and cotton fields. Would you want to live there yourself? 
Our runner up for the fastest shrinking city on this list is Little Volga, South Dakota. Look at this place. Seems like a good place to move if you ask me. No rioting, no looting, no homeless druggies, no BS. Just nice and quiet. Sure, you'd have to make some sacrifices, but come on people, you can get a home here for $262,000 in Volga? What the what the? I mean, the hardwood floors are nice, but geez louise. Not many people are leaving Nashville. It's like the fastest growing place in this whole region. But Memphis is Nashville's poor stepchild. Ain't nobody wanting to move to Memphis right now. Mostly because of terrible crime and ghetto BS. But look at this. Unlike many of the big cities we've seen on this list, Memphis was exploding until about 1978. And then it kind of just outgrew itself. I don't really see a problem here. Memphis just grew into its pants is all. Except the crime and ghetto BS. Nobody wants that. Wow, Wichita Falls, a 0.1% loss is the biggest loss in this whole state. If that doesn't put into perspective how fast Texas is growing, I would guess old school Texans are probably pissed at all the new people moving in, but I'm sure all the new Texas people are happy because they left wherever the heck they were and now they're in Texas. Similarly, Utah is growing almost as fast as Texas is and Taylorsville, population 60,000, lost only 83 people last year. 83 people, that's it? They probably just died. God, look at this thing. That looks like Cleveland. Rutland needs to offer people a free house or something or they're gonna be empty one day too. So Virginia's population's ticking upward, but two thirds of Virginia's growth is in Northern Virginia up by Washington DC. And the other chunk was by Richmond. The Hampton Roads part of the state in this Southeastern corner has plateaued. A lot of the bottom part of Virginia on the North Carolina state line has lost population. With Virginia, it's like all the old people are dying and the younger people are leaving and going to the DC area, which is very expensive and overhyped, if you ask me, which you did not. The state of Washington's exploding, much like Oregon, Nevada, Utah, Montana, and Idaho. So again, it's gonna be really hard to find a place that's actually shrinking. Waterville is one such place. Located in central Washington, it's at the base of the Cascades, they lost an astounding 16% of its already tiny population of 1,700 people in one year alone. Let's call them. Good morning. How are you? How can I help you? Hey, how are you doing? My name is Nick, and I'm doing a YouTube video on why Waterville, Washington is losing 16% of its population every year. Can you explain that, or have you noticed a lot of people are gone? actually does it seem um, like there's less people in there um yeah a little bit but i don't know where they would move or why would they would move okay nobody has any idea are you sticking around yes yep <laughs> you you like it there yes born and raised here good what's it like there um small town everyone almost everyone knows each other helps each other kind of escape from the rest of the world it's a great place that actually sounds like an amazing place. I can't see why 16% of folks would have left last year. I don't know. Well, thank you for the insight. I appreciate it. Yeah. Okay, have a good one in Waterville, Washington. Okay, thank you. Bye, babe. Bye. Dang, that was insightful. Now, next year, you can probably expect Seattle to be on this list. That place is seriously ruined for now. The homeless and drugs and crime is just out of control in Seattle, and the cops aren't doing anything about it. Everybody's leaving. The businesses are leaving. Cops are leaving, people who live downtown are leaving, even Columbia Sportswear shut down in downtown Seattle because people were just walking in and walking out with armloads of coats. Not running out, just walking out. If it wasn't for Illinois, West Virginia would have the biggest population decline in the nation. I mean, there's no surprises there. There's very little to do in terms of jobs outside of healthcare. It's super poor and it's boring. The state lost 4% of its whole population in the last 10 years. Charleston, the state's capital, saw almost two people leave every single day. Pennsylvania was the top choice for people leaving this state. Wisconsin's population's going up a little bit, but they aren't picking Milwaukee very often. They're picking the Milwaukee suburbs, just not Milwaukee proper. Milwaukee leaders have realized the importance of growing the technology sector here if they want to get people in. I mean, it's cheap. So if they could get tech companies in here like they are in Omaha, they might have a chance. Madison is the fastest growing part of the state. Good choice, that city's cool. And not coincidentally, they have a growing tech scene in Madison. Casper, our last city. A decent enough place to live. 
This chart shows that Casper's decline is actually very recent. It's been climbing up until around 2012, and then all of a sudden they lost 5,000 people. There's three reasons for that. People are just leaving Wyoming. The number of people having kids can't keep up with the older folks dying off, and Wyoming's energy sector has struggled. Coal demand's down dramatically, and when COVID hit, oil prices plummeted, so energy companies here in Wyoming had to lay a lot of folks off, so a lot of people left. Wyoming knows it can't rely on energy forever. But as more and more Americans choose the Wild West as a cheaper alternative to big city drama, expect Wyoming to be the next Utah, Idaho, or Montana. So that's it. It's a look at the cities that everybody's leaving in every state, or at least more so than the other cities in their states. For many of these places, it's just it's a loss of jobs and high crime and poverty. And for some of these places, it's just a matter of attracting younger people because all the old people are dying. And what do you think? Would you rather move to a place that everybody was moving to and you were part of the crowd? Or would you rather move to a place where nobody was at anymore, where everyone was leaving, where you could get a cheaper cost of living and be more isolated? Let us know in the comments below. Here we go. get our stuff and we'll take off and go to a place like everyone else we'll find a different base and we'll just live live there they go everyone is gonna go somewhere else I'll go to a place it's like their home but it's really not it'll be an even different place that they can all just live go these are our fastest shrinking cities Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great! You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching. And remember, while we all might have different views, we should all be nice to each other and try to make the U.S. a better place in a positive way. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.